So, a month ago I released my first solo developed indie game Plague of Yammer on Steam. It is the smallest and yet the biggest game I've ever made. And I've always wanted to make devlogs. I like watching them, but I felt like there was already a lot of them out there. People making their dream games and more often than not without previously having developed anything, so I didn't want to be just another dude making devlogs out of thin air. So I decided that I wouldn't make them without having anything to back me up so to speak. And now that I've shipped the game I feel like there's a bit more credibility to me and any upcoming devlogs or anything I'll make in the future, and I definitely will be making more stuff. But this isn't really a devlog, although there will be some peaks at the 1.1 update that I will talk about later on in the video. So what is this? What is your game? It's a grim 2D pixel art metroidvania. The development started during the beginning of the apocalypse, so it took me about 3 years to ship it. Having zero previous experience in art and music has been a steep learning curve, so I want to talk about my journey to release, an overview of the entire development process, my road to Yamorn. The development began on June 15, 2020. Going into it, I already had a tiny bit of experience programming from high school and college. Not much since school is a horrible fucking place to learn stuff, but I used to play around with RPG Maker, Construct and pursuing game dev on my free time a bit as well, so I knew my way around the code, you know? Art and music, I knew absolutely nothing, so that is where most of the development time went, really. I was set on making it all by myself, and I'm not an artist, or wasn't, still don't feel like one, couldn't draw for shit, but, you know. Over the years I improved a lot and right now it's at a state where I think it's passable as a product given my current skill level and the price point. But my previous renditions? This is built pre-alpha 0.1. This is not my first attempt at art, just the first build. The tile set was attempt number 6, doctor was 5 and the enemy was second attempt. These are my first attempts. I mean good god these are atrocious. Tried pixelating actual photo of a cyborg here. At the very least you can see improvements in them. Look at the doctor. What the hell? I had very little tolerance for my own skill level, even doing mockups. Here you can exactly pinpoint the layer where I just gave up. Oh my god! What really didn't help the matters was that I used to work in GIMP, which is just fine for pixel art up until the moment you dare to start animating it. By god is that the clunkiest shit ever. The animation frames are individual layers, so when you draw stuff and have things in separate layers, as you fucking should, the animation is just flipping through the layers. So I had to make an animation frame, duplicate the file and edit it, do that for all the frames, meaning I had to have a file for each one, then merge down the layers and put them into a final version type file if I wanted a GIF, or export each frame as a PNG to use in game. No idea how to do sprite cheats, don't care either, since I've purchased some pixel art courses on Udemy and watched a lot of YouTube tutorials and most of them use day sprite, which is perfect for pixel art. It has a lot of useful tools like brushes, eclipse and eraser, but mainly actual frames and onion skin which is great for animating stuff. So I drew and redrew stuff countless times while scrapping or changing some aspects to accommodate my lack of skill, animating daily while watching an ungodly amount of pixel art tutorials and courses. So slowly but surely I made incremental improvements in art over the 3 years of development, with the final build looking, well, the way it does now. Here's me in the academy, here's my rat, Geralt. Oh look at the cute little bastard! <laughs> so for any developers struggling with their art, just stick with it. If you're willing to rework everything countless times it will get better. And try not to compare your art with someone else's, compare it with your own stuff from like a month ago or something. I know it's hard to stay motivated, but just keep at it, it's all about stick to itiveness. So that's the graphical side of development. But I want to talk about devlogs for a bit. While making the game I started following a lot of indie devs and their projects. Channels like DevDuck, Lost Relic Games and Adam C. Eunice. I really like watching their devlogs, or any content really. Either covering different aspects of game design, the game dev life in general, or tutorials, whatever. A big motivation and a reassurance of sorts. Seeing people in similar situations to mine, making games in their home offices by themselves. Feels like watching real people making stuff and not just these ball of energy YouTube personas, you know? Big inspiration for me to start making this video and unbearably more in the future. Same ballpark, although they are more skilled than me, but being me Mediocre never stopped me from trying before, so whatever. Now I know I said I didn't want to make devlogs before shipping a game, but that was not entirely true. I felt that now, as a YouTuber, I should deceive you at least a little bit in the video. I have made devlogs during the development of Plague of Yamorn, I just didn't release them. I made them for my own personal use, being the developer's log, you know, and as a way for me to get used to talking to a mic and working in a video editing software. So yeah, this is the first devlog back from August 2021. Check me out back then, full of hope and optimism, gleam in my eye. And now look at me, this is what game development does to a fella. So tell me, 
Did it help? I know that I still have a lot of tension in my voice speaking English and no real solution on how to not sound like that, so I don't know. I just hope it kind of goes away. Anyway, expect more devlogs and other content for my next projects or whatever else I'll feel like making in the future. Now, sound and music. When it comes to sound effects, I wanted to make them myself as well, and I did start that way. Like when you jump, get hurt, or die. That's me grunting into the mic. But very early on, I realized that it would be impossible to make every sound effect. I knew that I wanted to have a cross core sound and a church bell ringing sound in the game, and what I didn't want was to stand outside the church with a microphone recording the bell, or chase around murders of crows. Even like the fire whoosh sound. This one, how do you make that? My stove doesn't sound like that. Lighting a match or lighter doesn't make that sound either. Anyway, I bought a lot of sound asset packs. And if you want to put money in something when it comes to game development, make it sound effects. 700 and 4 footstep sounds for 10 euros, it's ridiculous. I've got 72 different coin sounds, 120 different wood impacts. Even when I did record them, like the spike sound here. I got an RPG sound pack that has 31 superior ones. I'm limited to my own HyperX mic, so even for the stuff that I did record, the sounds from the asset packs usually sounded way better. So I'd say about 20% of the sounds in game are my own recordings. Even so, when you have a sound effect, it can be edited and mixed into an infinite amount of variations. A lot of layering over and combining, editing levels and pitch shifting, various audio effects added to make the sounds my own and unique. So a lot of labor goes into it, even without the recording, lest you want your game to sound generic. Sometimes the pack would only have a sound effect of a monster attacking and I had to record my impression of that monster in an idle state and its death sound or stuff like that, so I still did my fair share of recording. Sometimes though the naming can leave a bit to be desired. A fire sound effect. Fire! Sounds good to me. Fire! 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 Perfect. Fire. Music was a similar trajectory as art. I bought this butte and again started to watch a lot of YouTube tutorials and Udemy courses. Firstly, how to play the piano in general, even though I'd use it more as a tool to make music rather than playing an instrument, if that makes sense. But I wanted to know how to play it comfortably enough where I'm not just blindly blasting keys. I purchased FL Studio and got to practicing. I've got the keyboard and FL Studio in November 2022, so it was definitely a shorter journey than the art one. I figured that even if I was able to make just two simple songs for a theme and a boss fight, the game would be shippable. There are some areas, like the graveyard, that only have ambience and no music. So I was banking on that. Every area has a unique one to it, so it's not that silent even with the music turned off. Anyway, I did spend about 2-3 to three months on the soundtrack and most of the songs are just simple loops with a couple of variations in it. Like the song in the wine cellar. Three variations on loop. In some areas reuse songs, like the ruins and the academy. So there are planned reworks for the music and some new original songs in the following updates. Anyway, I've managed to make 8 original songs for the game. After the additional songs will be made, I was thinking about putting the entire OST here on YouTube. How about that, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in the comments below. So about the code. I did have some formal education in IT, but it was practically useless. And I'll leave it at that, lest I start hooting and hollering for years about the failures of the education system. I do know how to code since I learned it by myself regardless of that. Now that is not to say I didn't experience severe complications. Every programmer does. Every game runs into millions of issues during development, and mine is no exception. UI was just shaking when I was moving for most of the development. A big issue was scaling, given the nature of pixel art and pixel perfect resolutions. A lot of various hijinks, here's the list of all the fixed bugs. A lot of implementations are possibly illegal, code purists might want to toss me into jail, maybe even prison, but in my defense, hey it works. 
Coding was the only aspect of the development in which I was confident. I knew that any issue would be solvable one way or another, the only variable being time. Unforeseeable time fuckery is unavoidable, but it helped motivation a lot knowing that the game can be functional and only might look and sound like other trash if I don't figure out how to draw and make music. Definitely a better position to be in than the other way around. Figuring out coding while you know how to draw would be more of an uphill battle, I think. But there is a conversation there about the importance of graphics and how it's better to have an eye-catching game and priority of it over gameplay. But maybe some other time. I feel like the video is getting way too long already, like I've been recording for fucking ages. So... Now, I already released a roadmap for Plague of Yammer on Steam and Twitter, on which you should follow me right now. Or else! There will be a major update 1.1 called Shells and Shells, and it will include New Game Plus, a super secret area, new consumables, more minigames, additional ways to spend your money, a little something for completionists, and much much more. Here are some tiny ass peaks. Can you guess what this item does? Blast Drink will no longer be single use. Don't like those material gathering minigames? Well, you'll be able to enhance your tools and tell that minigame to go fuck itself. And that's all I'm showing and all I can take for now. If there is any aspect I didn't cover, or you want me to talk about some aspect more in depth, let me know. For now I just wanted to cover all the bases on at least the surface level. I've probably got a couple of years left before I shut this entire operation down due to creative differences or something, so there's no rush. Plague of Yamorn, on Steam right now. I cannot run a sale on my game on the account of it being less than 30 days since my launch discount ended. But it's cheap as hell anyway, so we get multiple copies right now. It costs $6, but it looks like a $7 game, so really, you are making money on this transaction. Net gain of a dollar. That means profit is made, so you'd be losing money not taking this deal. I'm just starting out YouTube as well, so it'll be a while before the grooming allegations come, so let's get there as soon as possible. Comment below, like and subscribe, comment again, share on all your social media platforms. Another comment. And thank you for sticking with this video to the very end, I really appreciate it. Alright, keep yourself safe. Oh, look at the cute little bastard! <laughs>